I would like to introduce him as Mr. Sanjay Gadale. He is a graduate in electrical engineering from IIT Delhi and postgraduate in management education from IIM Bangalore. He is specialized in value chain re-engineering design and design of the operation using the theory of constraint. The, he is also equally uh, participating in climate change. He is a uh, foundation found, is is the founding CEO of Team CC CEA that is Center for Climate Change and Environment Advisory, set up under the uh, edges of MS MCRHRD, Andhra Pradesh, that is State Government Agency, and he is an active. He is a graduate from IIT. And then his post graduation in management from IIM Bangalore, and he is doing his uh, consultation activities in the various areas. And one of the area is clean energy resourcing and the clean energy resourcing. Our today's uh, discussion will be what will be the potential for the clean resource management. Or clean resources for the engineering profession. Now I request Sanjay ji to start his presentation. Okay. So uh, uh, I uh, take this opportunity to thank this entire uh, Tech Forum team for having organized this session. I have, uh, to a certain extent, uh, uh, kept uh, this as an open session with uh, uh, with uh, adequate number of uh, numbers. As engineers are prone to be more happier with numbers as well as comfortable with numbers, but more on uh, the trends and the concepts so that we can actually have a sort of a open forum uh, for discussion. Uh, because uh, the way in which me uh, I got introduced to Tech Forum also is a, is a is a sort of a story of opportunities uh, that that actually are uh, exemplifying some of the stories that I will be outlining. Uh, for the engineers and their opportunities that they have in clean tech as they emerge and as they actually solidify across various sectors. Um, I met uh, Vilas around three years back, uh, by, and the common thread I think we should all be thankful uh, to each other is, of course, engineering that we that is that binds us all. Uh, but um, another sub part of engineering is actually communication, which especially ham radios international convention that happened in hyderabad i had the good fortune of interacting with vilas and and actually uncovering some of my older connects also with pune when i had just started my career uh, way back in the in 8990 when i was uh, in pune uh, with all of you uh, for almost um, uh, 6 months as a part of the ub team which was working with western india uh, enterprises wie enterprises and specifically on assignment with Western India Electronics uh, in um, Stilwell. And I have very fond memories of staying in Kothrud as well as playing in the in the WI uh, badminton courts and roaming, of course, around Pune and experiencing it. And uh, thanks to Pramod uh, and the rest of the team, which is doing a great work, and also the sort of uh, members who make up uh, Techno or Tech Forum, which is having a fantastic width and ability to actually engage across topics on trying to understand uh, uh, the deployment the you know the sort of engineering professional professionals key skill as well as availability requirement that the emerging clean tech in, uh, space is opening up for energy emerging professionals clean tech uh, this is basically relying upon these six wise men we are all aware of the what the why, the where, the when, the who, and the how. If I go back into either English or Hindi, basically our, and, and I would also request one of the participants to maybe uh, share the same uh, uh, translations in Marathi of the what, why, where, when, who, and how. That is the kya of the matter, the cub of the matter, the q of the matter, the kaha of the matter, and the kaise, that is the process of the matter. From the Indian perspective, 
and I have created a sort of a, a synopsis note which was shared earlier uh, by Pramod and Vilas. And I will expand upon that along with a few numbers that I have been able to collect, uh, collate, as well as some of the relevant learning videos, uh, which are, of course, much longer. I don't intend to show them in today's session, but you will have access to all those videos to be able to see at your leisure and come to your own conclusion as to how uh, the what, the why, the where, the when, and the who of the matter from your own perspective across these clean tech opportunities which are available right from hydro, hydroelectron, hydroelectric, hydroelectric power, coal power, fossil power, which is, of course, on its decline at the moment. But there is a lot of cost learning that is available to us to take us, take us out of the traditional power sector into the emerging clean tech power sector spaces and energy creation spaces like uh, the hydrogen economy that is emerging, even though it is unviable at the moment, uh, given the current uh, uh, EROE or the energy conversion ratio that's available between other versions as well as hydrogen. But the convenience of using hydrogen to the hydro hydrogen cell and the electrolysis process is very, very uh, tempting and needs to be explored. And a lot of work has actually been happening uh, in, uh, in Europe in this entire story and the US, where they have actually been able to substantially move uh, uh, transportation and logistics uh, into the hydrogen economy in a big way. And especially Cummins has come up with power trains up to 300 kilowatts is what I, what, what I was realizing as I saw, as I went through my research uh, uh, in the recent past. Uh, just a minute, I'm just logging into the Zoom right now. So I could show you the details. So, what it says basically is that uh, uh, the global perspective as it stands today, uh, as far as uh, uh, the entire space is there, while generating electricity and heat, engineers are contributing to the design which allows the entire plan, do, check, act, cycle to actually get matured with every cycle of development that we are achieving in each of these, uh, these, these sectors. And uh, uh, essentially in waste to energy, which is a, which is a sort of a multi-sectorial approach towards managing energy, which includes logistics, uh, collation, uh, separation, and then incineration, uh, incineration and, uh, and heat recovery. Uh, there are a number of uh, mechanical, uh, mechanical mechan me uh, skills in mechanical engineering and chemical engineering, civil engineering that actually combine. And also the emergent areas of AI where we draw upon the existing knowledge base that is available through our various engineering fields to make our data solutions more optimal. The same is true with clean hydrogen. Clean hydrogen that is produced via electrolysis using renewable energy is crucial is, is, a, is, a, is perceived to be crucial for decarbonizing industries. And this is directly addressing one of the biggest challenges that we're facing today of climate change and excessive uh, 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 global warming uh, because of inability to handle the carbon dioxide as well as the uh, warming uh, gases, including the methane and, uh, methane and other uh, derivatives. So we are actually looking at hydrogen, uh, uh, hydrogen in its various forms, especially the green hydrogen form of which we have had two or three of our esteemed members make wonderful presentations in the last few uh, months, which are also available as a reference where technical details can actually be studied. I'm not getting into those technical details, but essentially we are looking at not at the blue hydrogen, but we're looking at the green hydrogen, the ability of non-conventional and renewable energy sources being deployed effectively and, and efficiently for generation of hydrogen subsequent to which the hydrogen is being used as a fuel and an energy component for our various needs across locomotion, transportation, heat, uh, heat and uh, also uh, uh, other things which are required in manufacturing and other, other areas. So the infrastructure for the hydrogen production is under, under process, number of companies and Europe especially doing a lot of work. There are critiques also available, which I have shared as a part of the documentaries that I have shared inside the inside the uh, reference document that is available with you, you are all, you are welcome to go through this entire show, entire details at leisure. 
we can also have uh, a continuous engagement beyond uh, the session and the question and answers that we actually face right now uh, that we will that we will actually address uh, uh, once the session is over uh, and also look at the the, the sort of uh, regional opportunities that are that are available global investment in clean hydrogen is accelerating with leadership from countries like japan germany and australia Wind energy continues to grow as a dominant renewable energy source, so it's a very small component still. Technological, and but it is not; it is bigger than uh, waste to energy. So let us keep that in mind. Wind energy continues to grow as a dominant renewable energy source. Technology advancement in turbine design, offshore wind farms, and energy storage solutions expand its potential. Engineers play a crucial role in this in the site assessment. Uh, turbine design and grid integration. So we see here clearly the requirement of electrical, civil, as well as mechanical engineers, including, of course, uh, the various packages uh, and uh, efficiency uh, uh, modules that are developed by our computer engineers, by our IT uh, experts, as well as design engineers. The global wind energy market grows due to the decreasing cost and supportive policies. And of course, solar energy, the latest uh, uh, kid on the block that we are all uh, very uh, are looking at from the point of view of uh, a major source of clean tech uh, energy for uh, for our various needs. Uh, solar energy, of course, includes photovoltaic, concentrated solar power, pivoted in global transitions to clean energy, and engineers are essential in improving the efficiencies that are involved in the in the semiconductor that is actually being utilized and slowly being deployed for making of the cells, developing new materials, optimizing concentrated solar power technologies, which actually takes us into, back into physics and opticals and optics, integrating solar energy with battery storage systems that again take us, takes us into the chemical industry, chemical and storage industries, lithium ion, lead acid, and the remaining technologies that are available. Of course, the latest, latest ones are phosphorescent solar and sulfur. The solar sector grows rapidly due to the declining costs and technological advantages that favor regulatory environment. In fact, when I created the first center of excellence for the solar industry when, uh, in way back in 2005, between the IIT and community that, we, that was working with me, and as well as the center for climate change that we set up in 2009, I remember we, it was a, the cost per megawatt, which required five acres of land to be deployed for us for a ground-based solar plant was approximately 13 crores, 13.5 to 17 crores. That has now come down to almost three and a half to four crores with almost the area requirement having also come down thanks to the material changes that have happened in the cells, et cetera, to almost four and a half acres, which is substantial. Then of course, the ability to use uh, uh, multiple hybrid solutions, which involve a number of areas, especially for those areas which are not grid connected. Uh, basically, this allows remote area uh, solution uh, so solution deployment, as well as improvement of uh, quality of life of communities. Then the last portion is more of a lifestyle uh, area that is that the world is grappling with. We know for we know that uh, we all uh, live a different lifestyle in different parts of the parts of the world. A similar American uh, American who has got access to a much higher per capita income compared to an Indian uh, or even, for example, a European, a German, is having a lifestyle which consumes almost 20 to 30 times more energy because that has got a direct, uh, a, a direct correlation to the quality of life as is called by the consumption-led economy that we are actually living in. So the circular economy, to a very large extent, tries to... Uh, minim, uh, to maximize the utilization of any knowledge in being able to extend the life of a product into multiple uses at its different stages in its life cycle. And that involves a, a, a completely different perspective, not only on our personal front, but also on our, our professional fronts for utilizing available technologies optimally and taking it forward. So we were on circular economy. The circular economy model promotes the reuse, recycling, and regeneration of materials, reducing the waste and conserving resources. Engineers like us can be can innovate in designing renewable energy systems to be more 
sustainable and efficient. This includes using recyclable materials and solar panels, wind turbines, developing systems to recover and reuse waste heat, waste heat and materials from the, the waste to energy processes. What, what it misses out, of course, is also the traditional uh, ability to actually live in a circular economy that is built into our culture itself, where we make sure that every item that we use is utilized till the end, including the clothes that we wear, the rags that we have, and of course, the engines that we use, because we tend to re them. We know that, that, that that is where knowledge makes a difference between use and throw and use and continue to use in a different uh, functionality. So when I focus this entire story on India, uh, India with its very large population, but unfortunately low per, per capita income uh, has its own challenges. And uh, today, uh, if you look at the numbers, we are literally uh, after China, uh, the sort of uh, 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 in gro on gross terms, the, the second largest energy consumers, uh, uh, sorry, the third largest energy consumers in the world after U.S. And, uh, and, and that requires a lot of effort and a lot of work uh, amongst our engineers to actually make it happen at the price point and at, at, at the expectations that, uh, that, the, that the country demands. The Indian government has set up ambitious renewable energy targets, which is aiming to almost 175 gigawatts by 2022 and 450 gigawatts by 2030. Uh, we are uh, reaching those particular levels uh, slowly, but not at the same pace at which the government has actually uh, has, has, has tried to identify. So I was just doing a quick research today, uh, uh, later early in the day, and what turned out was um, this as a sort of a quick reference that we all could quickly look at as to what was the global clean tech energy generation. Uh, as well as compared to India. And you can see very clearly that we are at a fraction of what is happening across the world on the overall uh, 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 generation uh, side as far as solar and clean tech is concerned, which also is an opportunity in disguise from the point of view of what, what are the emerging and other additional opportunities that our engineers have to actually make this technology relevant to India and adopt it in a in a sort of a in in a in, in a in a sustainable manner. When I was looking at, uh, uh, we'll come back to this part later. I just wanted to show you the comparison between uh, uh, global energy generation as well as consumption here. So the total power uh, in MTOE, MTOE essentially is defined. Here, it is million tons of oil equivalent. Normally, energy comparison is done across economies. Energy use refers to the use of primary energy before transformation to other end use fuels, which is equal to the indigenous production of uh, plus imports and stock changes. This is minus the fuel and energy that's used for exports and fuel supply to ships and aircrafts used in transportation. So the millions of tons of oil equivalent uh, is a unit of energy that is used to describe the energy content of all fuels. Typically on a very large scale, it is equal to 41.868 uh, petajoules, which is equivalent to basically uh, 10 to the power of 4.1868 into 10 to the power of 16 uh, joules. Now, you know that giga is 10 to the power of 9, tera is 2 to the power of 12, and, uh, uh, and uh, peta is basically 10 to the power of 16 over here. So this is a huge amount, and we are essentially seeing a global growth of energy consumption and generation, which is in the range of 1.5 to 3 percent, depending on the, on essentially on the, uh, uh, on on the sort of uh, uh, economy that is actually working uh, that that we are addressing, and uh, 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 and and, and uh, analyzing. So the key points that are coming out here is that uh, the total. Uh, total production uh, of energy sources uh, that is available to the globe, uh, to the world, is 13,000 MTOE 
in 2010 and it has moved up to 14,500 and is projected to be 15,000 MTOE by 2029-30. You know that we have, we have committed to try to be net zero by 2070. Uh, so this is in line with the global one when I look at the Indian, Indian story. The Indian consumption essentially is, is uh, uh, 450 MTOE in 2010 and has grown as almost tripled to 1200 MTOE, uh, 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 yeah, will triple to 1200 MTOE by 2029 and is almost uh, uh, two and a half times as on date today because it has crossed 880 MTOE in 2020, uh, 2020. Inside this, in this entire uh, 450 MTOE, it was only 18 gigawatts in 2010, and it has grown to 175 gigawatts. You can see that there has been a substantial increase in capacity, though much lesser than 450 that the target that has been taken uh, uh, by 2029. The solar capacity, which was negligible in 2010, has moved to uh, 40 gigawatt level in 2020 and is projected to be a major contributor which means should be in the way range of 60 to 70 gigawatt in 2029 the coal share capacity in electricity generation has come down from 70 percent to 56 percent over the last 10 years and is projected to be below 50 percent by 2030 the waste to energy has gone up from 100 megawatts in 2010 to 500 megawatts and is expected to be around 1,000 megawatts from the 900 megawatt level that it has reached today. So these are basically indicators of the various opportunities that our engineering capable, engineering designers and uh, our engineering faculty and, and, uh, and, and uh, resources that are available, both in, in the capital form as well as in the intellectual form, which can be deployed to be able to achieve these end objectives with, of course, a gap. So the India story itself, though might be small, the larger opportunity comes from a global, a global growth also that is happening across these particular areas. Coming back to uh, uh, the total renewable energy consumption uh, uh, that we have, uh, specifically between wind, solar, hydro, and bioenergy, it has been growing at about 10% on the global scale, uh, at the global level. And the total energy generation in 2010 is, uh, from 2010, it has moved around 17% as a component, right? Then we have uh, wind and solar energy, so the most significant increase with wind capacity increasing from 200 gigawatts in 2010 to 707 in 2020, with solar PV capacity rising from 40 to 580 gigawatt over the same period. So all these are actually happening across Europe, America, and the rest of the world, which include Japan, which are the larger markets, and China. So which essentially, again, takes us back to another question of the ability to communicate across these regions effectively and for engineers, which basically means even though we have the common language of mathematics and engineering and analytical skills that drives us, the connect at the bottom has to be to be also able to understand the cultures as well as the languages to be able to cross communicate with the various resources that are available to us. When I go come back to India on the same, Nuclear energy has essentially remained almost the same on the global level with 2,600 just going to 2,800 terawatt hours in 2020. The Indian story has basically been increasing at around uh, uh, three and a half to four percent year on year when it has moved from 450 uh, to uh, uh, total energy consumption has, uh, sorry, it has been India, uh, the global uh, growth rate has been around three and a half to five, uh, two, uh, four percent. Whereas the Indian story has been much higher at around eight to ten because of the, because of the developing country that we are, and it has moved from four hundred fifty uh, million tons of uh, equivalent uh, uh, biofuel uh, of uh, uh, hydro, uh, sorry 
carbon fuel to uh, approximately uh, 880 MPO in 2020. Whereas inside this, the renewable energy com component has shown significant growth with the capacity increasing from 18 gigawatt to over 100 gigawatt by 2020. Solar energy saw a major surge from virtually negligible in 2010 to about 40 gigawatt in 2020. And conventional energy, has, which, which was driven by coal and, and of course, gas, uh, continue to be the mainstay, though its share in electricity generation has dropped from 70% to 56%, even though the larger generation of the entire country has actually been increasing year on year. Waste energy has been a very small component, as I had mentioned earlier, too. 100 megawatts has moved to 500 megawatts. And uh, as far as the projections for the next years or the next five years are concerned, it looks that uh, we will continue to grow modestly on the global level uh, uh, as um, uh, the developing countries in China, uh, especially China as well as India, uh, take over along with the smaller countries. The wind and solar capacities are projected to double. Uh, renewable shares of total energy could exceed 25% by 2029. So a renewable energy basically has got a direct linkage to clean tech, as well as the opportunities that are available, uh, that are available to existing engineers from technology and skilling that can be built. Uh, fossil fuels has continued to decline as coal usage is shared possibly falling below 25% by 2029. Natural gas expected to increase its share as a transition fuel. Total energy consumption expected, India's total energy projection is expected to surpass 1,200 MPOE by 2029. It is approximately 1,100 today. Renewable energy will be projected to reach uh, approximately 175 gigawatt by 2029 with solar energy contributing to most. Conventional energy, coal will still play a significant role though its share might decrease to around 50% by 2029. Waste energy will increase around 1,000 megawatts from the current levels, which is what, uh, which is approximately 100% growth from the current level. But uh, that, is, that itself is a big opportunity for emerging engineers that we have over here. So that brings us back uh, to the final numbers that we would like to actually focus on and look at the larger opportunity for engineers, which are here. So as I see that, uh, Compared to, uh, uh, compared to uh, uh, the uh, the world, uh, we essentially are uh, at uh, uh, on as far as solar is concerned, we are hardly uh, reducing around seven uh, percent. Yeah, seven percent of the world's solar, and as far as wind is concerned, we are. Uh, Less than six. Clean hydrogen is a completely emergent area. As you can see here, we are less than one-tenth of what is happening in the world. And uh, as far as the rest is concerned, we are again even lower, which essentially is, where is, is the remaining components that are technologies that are emerging, which again, uh, would list out to be, uh, this, this includes uh, uh, combined cycle, uh, uh, combined cycle gas based, um, as well as uh, uh, electric PV uh, and uh, battery based, uh, battery based storage technologies and integrated technologies that can actually uh, be addressed. So, this is a sort of a leap of faith that. Uh, uh, that the world has a huge uh, uh, advantage over thanks to technology as well as a more uh, uh, a richer uh, economy compared to India. We have basic, basically an opportunity from our engineering, uh, engineering uh, skill base that is there in India to integrate and bring back these technologies in India to be able to create centers of excellence, which is what the government is doing in a big way. Uh, across the field, starting with the IT, uh, IT areas where we are developing the capability of these people uh, to, be, to be able to handle international projects uh, which involve these emergent technology areas. Now, this is the big challenge which actually comes back to our education sector because if we have the current story of 
the youth being denied their opportunity to learn and contribute to the emerging economy right at the beginning itself when they are not able to cross their competitive exams and get into good good colleges to learn without uh, the the right uh, level of encouragement uh, we are actually killing the goose was well, killing killing the goose right in the in the gander itself so one has to address our education our skill development and our technological ecosystem that is available for mentoring and nurturing the people around us to upgrade their skills as well as to expose them to these areas and i think in that direction we i believe tech forum is 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 doing a great job in being able to bring in these sort of programs and such very professionals onto this platform who can actually address the knowledge gap as well as the skill gap uh, and also the opportunity gap by the sort of entrepreneurship culture and the ability to take on challenges that is available within our members uh, i will uh, uh, wrap up the uh, this entire presentation now with this uh, with what we started off with where uh, these four quotes are the key that i consider uh, starting from this for all our engineers as a, as a message it is use it or lose it unused money tends to devalue unused talent diminishes unused potential will decay unused machinery will disintegrate unused time tends to die unused is also underutilized let us keep that in mind wherever there is an excess capacity to what is available uh, the excess capacity to what is being done versus what is actually achievable it is unused the same way unused knowledge becomes a burden what isn't used is abused the tragedy of life isn't the ultimate death but the resource that idle and die with a new when you are still alive use it or we will all lose it so let us all use whatever is available within us rather uh, uh, and and make things happen and uh, towards that these are the videos uh, links which i will share on the chat and also share with the organizers that you can actually uh, uh, see at your leisure and uh, and uh, the final is yeah this is the one So I think I will end up uh, this session with uh, this quotation by Swami Vivekananda. That is uh, that is the driving force of today's session as well. As far as clean tech opportunities for engineers are concerned, we are all aware of the opportunities that we ourselves are making making use of, and we are utilizing in our circle of influence. The need of the R is being able to use intellectual responsibility and intellectual. intent to increase our circle of influence and what our, and enables that to be done is the ability to take intellectual responsibility for various projects be perseverant in growing our our knowledge base as well as the people whom we interact with having an open mind towards new ideas that come in and try them out create those sort of resources to enable to enable that empathize with the problems that are around us and put our mind to it have integrity towards driving the solution in a driving driving towards the solution and also engaging the people around us having the intellectual courage to decide to decide as well as define and speak the truth at all times the confidence in our own capabilities in reasoning as well as in reasoning the love of truth intellectual humility imaginativeness and curiosity and the fair mindedness with autonomy which should drive our ability to engage in building up these resources to be able to take on these emerging opportunities teach yourself teach everyone their real nature call upon the sleeping soul and see how it awakens power will come glory will come goodness will come purity will come and everything that is excellent will come when the sleeping soul unutilized soul is roused to self conscious activity by swami vivekananda thank you i leave the session now open for question and answers uh, uh, requested members are 
put your questions with by telling your name. Hi, Sanjay. I am Ajay here. I am Ajay Singh. Uh, I know Sanjay. I am an engineer, electrical engineer. And uh, I was in uh, healthcare for a long time, sales service. But now what I'm doing is actually relevant to what we are discussing. I am part of the project team for a fully integrated solar manufacturing plant, which is right from using quads and the output is the solar panel. We are... Mm -hmm. can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, Ajay. You're, you're, you're audible clearly, no problem. We are probably the only two people I think after one is Ambani and one is us who are actually going into manufacturing polysilicon, which is the raw material for uh, the semiconductor and photovoltaic cells. And 80% uh, of above is market is held by China. So we I'm in the project management for that. And we are also setting up uh, upstream to polysilicon, which is converting quartz to metallurgical grade silica, which is the raw material for polysilicon. And then downstream where they will use our polysilicon to cut, uh, to produce ingots, then cut wafers, cells, and the whole thing. At Tech Any Forum, we will help you out to represent yourself all these concepts. So let us move to other uh, participants who there are many questions. Sure, like. sure. I'm Pramod Deshpande. Can you suggest what yes, kind Pramod. of skill center, skill center should be developed for the purpose of generating the interest in the student in the energy sector because there are a lot of skill centers which are related to IT and related areas. So if yes. you throw a light that in your opinion, what could be the skill centers can be developed because Pune is considered as a hub for education. But I didn't totally find agree. any college no. or yeah. So can you just throw a light on that? Sure, Pramod. So, Pramod, uh, I will, uh, uh, Pramod and the rest of the members, just to share with you uh, a little, the small attempts that we have made uh, to enable uh, this to actually be brought into the consideration set of the of the emerging generation, which has got overawed by uh, desk jobs and uh, essentially sitting on, uh, on IT uh, jobs per se, without uh, getting into the detailing of using their hands to learn and, and contribute to the to the growth of this country and the economy is actually uh, first has to start uh, uh, maybe uh, also at the industry level where uh, we need to make our jobs that are being offered uh, more visible and understandable to the emerging youth, which are basically inundated by ads and very high paying sort of salary offers that most of the professional institutes seem to be offering these people without talking about how their career progresses beyond the first few years. So one of the most important areas that we need to address as professionals is actually our ability to share our personal experiences with these younger generation on various forums and platforms so that they understand that their hair like in their name and the most important part also remains that koshish karne walon ki hi jeet hoti hai. How do we create these sort of labs which allows the interest to actually awaken? We have done something uh, uh, which has allowed institution of engineer, engineers, professionals and students to actually engage through a network of projects that we have created under Engineers Without Borders India chapter. I happen to be the coordinator for the various chapters, which we have almost 120 colleges involved across the country, where along, uh, where along with the faculty and the student group, which comprises the second, third, and fourth year for continuity and management and running of that entire ch at that chapter in that institute, we also bring in the professionals in our pool who are working with expertise across multiple domains, which are involved in engineering, which are involved in and have an understanding also of the social problems that are relevant to that to the to that particular region. So, converging that learning and understanding along with the expertise as well as the discipline of looking and designing a solution, going through our 
basic what, why, where, when, who, and how approach, including the old and the trusted larger approach of planning, doing, checking, and acting with stakeholders in that particular community with these particular teams. I thank Sanjay sir for giving the overview of the energy generation, energy requirements, and their composition, and how, what way we should increase the renewable energy component, and what is the need. Now, all the time, the cost is a constraint which is being told in the technology way, and how to overcome that cost aspect by innovation and uh, skilling or understanding, because sometimes the cost has to overpass the thing because there are a lot of things which are related to energy, which is related to social cost benefit. And that social cost benefit needs to be addressed, which is difficult to address in a conventional way. And I think with the help of Sanjay Gadale, sir, we can able to address these things and uh, technical forum members who are interested in such kind of activities can form a group and can interact so that the issues can be handled.